Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another RC related uh, review. Today I'm going to take a look at the uh, ISDT 500 watts uh, LiPo charger. This is uh, very compact, it can be used as an uh, outdoor charger also, so when you are going to a place where you are flying your quadcopters, drones or uh, driving your RC cars, you can take this with you. Use a large LiPo and with that you can charge multiple smaller LiPos. This has a very wide voltage input, it can take uh, anything from uh, 9 volts up to 30 or 32 volts, so you have a lot of options, you can use a car battery, you can use a laptop power supply, you can uh, repurpose an old uh, ATX uh, computer power supply for it. You have a lot of options, you can feed it with almost anything and it will uh, balance charge your battery. So let's take a look into the box and get this, uh, I cannot call it manual, it's only a thing that it has uh, specifications. You can pause this video if you want to and it shows up the input and output ports and that's it. I take it out of the box, you can see it's very compact for a high 100 watt charger. Here it has the battery connection port, a balance port, USB port, you can uh, use this to charge your mobile phone also. Link port is for updating the firmware and here it has the input port, so you can see 9 volts to 30 volts. And that it, it only has one button, this is a dial button and a push button and with this you can change all its settings. So I'm going to use a larger LiPo to power it on. I'm going to connect the battery. Okay, so let's zoom into the screen. So this is how the startup menu looks like. And now I'm going to connect another LiPo, the one that I want to charge or discharge or whatever. So I'm going to connect it right now. So when I connect the LiPo, it's a 3S LiPo, it will show me the voltage directly for each cell and the total voltage. And if I press this button here, I have uh, some options to choose. So I can choose the task, if I want to charge, discharge or storage. Let's uh, put here charge first. And I'm going to select the battery type, it's a LiPo, LiPo high voltage lithium ion and so on, you can choose your chemistry, it even charges old nickel cadmium or metal hydrates the batteries, so I'm going to choose LiPo, the number of cells it will be automatically selected, but you can change that also, it's very nice that it identifies your battery type, uh, here you can set the charging current, and I'm going to select let's say 1 amp and if I press start it's already started charging my battery here is the charging current here is the current that was put into the battery here you have a progress bar and it will show me each cell voltage if I use the, this dial now it shows me the internal resistance of each cell but this will be displayed later not now so charger needs some time to calculate it and uh, uh, when it's charging the battery it will do some approximations and when all those are finished it will start to display uh, internal resistance as you can see it has uh, appeared now but this will uh, change during this charging process so it would be better to watch those when the charging is almost uh, finished uh, here also you have input and output power it shows me that I'm uh, drawing 40 watts of power and the input voltage is 12.5 uh, volts and I'm charging now at 11.6 uh, uh, volts and 12 watts of power and this is the charger temperature which is now 27 degrees and uh, those are the settings and uh, things that are displayed here if I press this button here again you can modify on the fly the charging current, so if I push 1.3 amps, the charger will 
start charging faster this is very nice because you can adjust the current on the fly and it will not lose the tracking of the input milliamps so it's very nice because on other chargers you need to stop them and start from the beginning and it will no longer display the total input capacity so you can charge slow you can charge fast and that's very nice and I'm going to stop charging now and the charger has stopped uh, if I long press this button it will go to the charger menu settings where you can limit the input power the minimum input voltage this is useful when using uh, lipos uh, if you don't want to destroy them you can select your desired minimum input voltage when that level is reached the charger will not charge anymore to protect your battery uh, you can select the screen uh, backlight intensity uh, the volume settings if you want the dial to click on make sounds you can enable that and select voltage for language it has a lot of languages available well, at least there are four which are probably Chinese and Japanese uh, former share option is uh, very useful if you have uh, another uh, identical charger you can uh, export the firmware from this and uh, charge it into the uh, other one OS info it will show the firmware version self-testing is for self-testing of course and that's it uh, as you can see no complicated menu very easy to use uh, very logical uh, processes uh, as they follow through the menu and uh, a lot of power in a very small package so this was my quick uh, review of the ISDT charger, the 500 watt version. I need to do some uh, thorough testing with it to see how it copes with uh, large lipos like this uh, 7 amp here. It's a 3S uh, battery, but I also have larger batteries. Uh, I'm curious to see when charging at full power how noisy it is and uh, how fast it will uh, heat up. Uh, those are details, uh, this is a uh, uh, large upgrade when uh, you are using uh, something like uh, IMAX B6 or IMAX clone because those are very popular, everyone uses them but those only have uh, uh, 50 watts output power, not 500 and they are larger, more uh, uh, hard to use, more complicated. Uh, this has a much more simplified menu and with this dial and push button it's very easy to set up. So until next time, bye bye!